We're getting to the end of the Fifth Age quest. So this episode we set our sights on tackling gods, Mahajarat, and also sometimes cats. So I have um, five Fifth Age quests left to do, uh, plus the Wild Wakes, which uh, marks RuneScape's movement from the Fifth to the Sixth Age. And I have one big hurdle preventing me from just rolling through all the remaining quests, and that's Pieces of Hate. Um, it's the season finale of the Pirate series, and despite me being a master quest, it has some absolutely brutal skill requirements. We're looking at the requirements here, it's got 83 agility, 82 fire making, 81 construction. Now, I'm not too far off 82 fire making or 81 construction, but um, 83 agility is going to be a, a really brutal slog to get that. Um, I've been actually started the grind for 83 agility back in episode 1, I just haven't been showing it on screen much, and I'm only up to 78 agility, although I'm almost at um, 78. Uh, and I've been testing various ways to train it, train it at my level, and they're all pretty disappointing. Um, in, you know, they're all pretty disappointing in different ways. I can do Harmony Pillars, which is what I'm doing right now, which is relatively AFK, and um, if I'm paying attention, it can get me up to, say, 70k, 75k XP an hour, which is pretty good, but it caps out 28k XP a day, which is going to put me at uh, level 83 um, agility, like, sometime in September, which is not, obviously not, um, not okay. Uh, doing the Prif course during the half an agility hour, is also pretty good. That gets me about 70k agility XP an hour plus 15k prayer XP. But obviously, again, I can only do that one hour at a time. Then I have to stop and wait for the half an hour to come back again. Um, and off hour, it's a lot worse. It's about 50k XP only, and there's no prayer XP. And then lastly, there's the Anachronia agility course. It's by far the most click intensive because you need to use Surge and Bladed Dive to make it through the dead space between the obstacles. And I've only been able to get about, say, 50 k XP an hour here. Maybe I would do better if I optimize my route more, but that's what I've been getting. Um, although, obviously, you do get the fragments for the double surge trick, which is nice. Um, although, I'll be able to get these fragments a lot more efficiently later on, once I can do the whole course. Right, that's at 85 agility. Uh, in general, I'm going to be hitting the pillars every day. And I'm trying to be to do the Prif agility course when it's half an hour. But it is going to take, you know, at least... 10 hours or so um, to to do even even efficiently. It'll take at least 10 hours to get you through agility. So I'm not going to do all them on go. I'll be breaking it up with other bits of uh, training throughout the episode. Yeah, it's level 80 agility. That's uh, getting pretty close to what we need. Taking a break from agility training, I'm going to start the first quest of the episode. Farmaker's Curse is part of the Return of Zaros questline that continues into the Sixth Age. Zaros is an old and powerful god who we'll learn much more about in the Sixth Age, but for now remains shrouded in mystery. One of his champions, a pyromancer named Char, was betrayed and imprisoned during the God Wars, and now a group of enthusiastic but completely out of their depth fire enthusiasts have stumbled upon this jail. Hoping to unlock new farmmaking secrets, Phoenix and his band of merry adventurers enter the caves where things quickly go pear-shaped as Char starts possessing the various adventurers and making them kill each other for reasons. Char's just kind of a dick to be honest. Navigating through Char's traps and puzzles you get to a boss fight that, like almost all the other pre-OC boss fights, has not aged that well. After defeating Char for the final time she calms down a little, apologizes for murdering some of your friends, and then gives you some fire making XP. So that's a win I guess? Never really got that invested in Phoenix anyway. You know you've been uh, at the heaven course too long when you gained a prayer level. Still, 81 prayer, can't complain with that. So here I am hitting level 81 at the uh, Snorkel and Scrambles mini event. It's 18k XP for this one, which is going to take me uh, to level 81 agility. I hadn't realized how good the XP rate was on these uh, little mini games. In agility, it's actually pretty good. Because it gives you like a major non trivial boost to your alley XP. And it gives you pieces of nimble outfit. That's four pieces I have now. That's pretty good. And that's even a relevant uh, relevant shortcut. Level 81, the Slayer Dungeon Chasm shortcut, and the uh, multiple Azure skill chompers would have been useful back when I actually was catching them. 
Nomad's Requiem is a Grandmaster Quest from 2010 based around the minigame Soul Wars, back when minigames were actually relevant. You discover that the proprietor of Soul Wars, a ludicrously suspicious character called Nomad, is actually funneling the energy from the death and destruction he's facilitating to increase his own power. Maybe the fact that nobody actually plays Soul Wars anymore explains why he's such a pushover in the final fight. More seriously, it's actually kind of sad that Jaggers had to remove the play a game of Soul Wars from the quest requirement because of a difficulty of finding people prepared to play a defunct minigame from a decade ago. At time of release, the Nomad boss fight was actually incredibly hard, arguably the hardest and most challenging boss fight in the game to date. Not for the first time, or last time though, Power Creepers greatly diminished the threat of Nomad over time, and many of the mechanics that made him so difficult are now relatively trivial. He does get a much tougher rematch of the 6th Age quest Nomad's Elegy though, so don't feel too bad, he still gets his moment in the sun, or maybe not given his unhealthily pallid skin tone. Hey, the second level picked up from the pit. 20,000 XP, doubled. That's gonna be level 82. Just once my uh, character's been smacked on the head by a man in a gorilla mask. Hey, there you go, 82 agility. 20k is not bad for like 5 minutes work. No unlocks, but just one unlock, one level until I get the requirement for pieces of hate. That is level 83 agility, and it took a while, but that is the last agility level I need. Pieces of hate. Now on a roll, because here it is a few minutes later. 82 fire making. The second requirement, pieces of hate. Now all you gotta do is get to 81 construction. And one daily task in construction done later, and I have 81 construction and all the levels I need for pieces of hate. Let's go on to the quest that is <laughs> had me stunned for about almost a week because I grind out mostly the Aegeus levels, but also some of the others. Pieces of Hate is the latest quest in the Pirate Questline series, and it doesn't mess about. For a questline that starts so innocently, digging up some treasure for a drunken pirate in Port Zerim, Pieces of Hate has Lovecraftian horrors, eldritch gods, and really, really creepy cats. After staging another breakout from RuneScape's worst prison, you realise that Rabbit Jack, the main antagonist of the series, is planning something worse than you imagined. After fending off an attack on Mos Lahamas, you realise it's time to strike back at the heart of the deranged Rabbit Jack in the underwater temple of the mad forgotten god he worships. Despite being 5th age, the quest is actually quite recent and posts the evolution of combat update, so Rabbit Jack is no pushover. Although, after a tough fight, you do eventually push him over into some kind of abyssal pit. He's probably coming back though at some point, don't worry about it. Overall, I have really mixed feelings about Pieces of Hate, as well as the pirate questline in general. RuneScape has always had a weird relationship with humour, where the lore jumps from silly jokes to serious topics and back again. But Pieces of Hate really pushes this dichotomy into overdrive, with both sides often on display within minutes of each other. The whole pirate quest series is filled with kooky minigames and awful, awful pirate based puns. Whether it's piloting a talking bird, bringing a cocktail to a disembodied zombie head on a beach, or the endless, endless use of the phrase R, there's a lot of comic relief in there. But Pieces of Hate itself is actually a super dark and creepy quest. Nowhere is this more evident than with Zautek, the Lovecrafting god that's cashing Rabbit Jack's checks. Zautak and everything associated with his lore is freaky as hell. Everyone dealing with him goes insane, and the final fight takes place in this cool underwater ruin with Zautak's black stone hands coming out of a bottomless pit of darkness. Zautak himself is super enigmatic, rumored to be so powerful that he isn't even aware of you, Rabbit Jack, or even Gilinor, given how insignificant we seem to him. There's nothing wrong with this, and I actually love Zautek and his storyline. It's just weird that he lives in the same quest as the one where he fights zombie pirates by unleashing rum drug crabs onto them. I don't know. It's a bit jarring. RuneScape's split personality is at show here with the visuals as well. The newer areas like Oof and Kreef look incredible, 
but they do go some way to highlight just how visually dated some of the older areas and characters are. The rewards are more than decent though, with 200,000 plus XP, as well as a variety of quality of life changes. You get the Big Book of Piracy that has some helpful teleports, as well as an upgrade to let the Holy Wrench work with the Dungeoneering Prayer Necklaces, if I ever decide to invest in one of those. Lastly, Rabbit Jack's sword as a cosmetic override looks pretty dope. Next up, we have A Tale of Two Cats, an old quest from 2005. The incredibly bald Unferth has lost his cat, Bob, and we have to find him. If this seems a little low-key after battling an evil lord last quest, then... Well yeah, this quest does seem a little dumb. There was a period though in Jagex's history when they were really into cat-based quests, so I guess this is just a result of that stat. Anyway, with the help of our own cat, we do find Bob, who's lovesick and pining after a different cat, Nate from Softener. We do eventually set these two cats up on a romantic date, and Bob agrees to go back home to Unferth. I have to break it to you though, Bob, Berthop and Softenham are a long way away, and long distance relationships are pretty hard. Good luck with that, buddy. Also, it turns out that Bob is the reincarnation of Robert the Strong, a legendary 4th age hero who battled the evil and mysterious Dragon King, luckily long disappeared from Gilanor. Maybe I buried the lead a little here, because it turns out those Dragonkin are going to be pretty important as you move into the 6th age, and also they're going to become a whole lot less disappeared. The reward is an XP lamp for 2500 XP. I mean, I know XP rates were lower in 2005, but still, that's insultingly bad. This moves us onto the last of the 5th age quests, and the culmination of the Lucian questline, Ritual of the Mahajarat. If the last quest was folksy and simple, this one is epic and expansive. The Majorat are powerful and immortal beings, relics from the God Wars, and one of them, Lucian, has eyes on ascending to godhood himself. After the previous quest, while Guthic sleeps, he's collected two magical artifacts, the Staff of Armadale and the all-powerful Stone of Jams. And in this climactic finale, he's going to use both of them during a rare meeting of the Mahajara. The quest starts a world away though, on the pirate island of Mos Lahamas. Someone sighted strange bird-like creatures chucking fireballs about in the jungle, and you're sent to investigate. Sure enough, you find the Dragonkin, seemingly enraged about false users and hellbent on destruction. What you find is that the unlimited power of the Stone of Jazz does not come without cost. The Dragonkin are its guardians, enslaved to destroy anyone who dares use it. You explore the ruins of Kesti an earlier civilization from another world. Once advanced and prosperous, it's now a dead waste, destroyed by the Dragonkin because the Cassians were foolish enough to use the stone. And now, Lucian's reckless ambition threatens Gilinor with the same fate. At the ritual itself, the different Marjorie factions face off. The fight against Lucian is personal though, after he killed several of your friends in the previous quest. The combat itself hasn't aged well. I remember fighting this a long time ago on my main, and it was tough, but post evolution of combat, the fight isn't what it was. As you fight your opponents, your allies fight around you. But the enemies die so fast, you end up actually having to wait around for your friends to clean up their fights before moving on to the next stage. It's a shame, because the story itself has lost none of its epicness, but the mechanics just don't fit the atmosphere anymore. It seems unlikely but it would be great if Jagex rebalanced some of these old quest fights. Eventually, Lucian, augmented by the Stone of Jazz, is too strong. When all seems lost, the Dragon can arrive. Seemingly immune to the Stone's powers, the Dragon can finally defeat Lucian, ending his bid for godhood. There's too much lore and story here to fully explain in a clip like this, and I wouldn't do it justice anyway, but the quest ends on a bittersweet note. Lucian is defeated, but at great cost, with many heroes of Gilinor dead and you're left with a portent of an even greater threat to come, as the Dragonkin are now back, and they're very, very angry you've been using the stone. The quest rewards are huge though, which makes sense, because this is basically the culmination of the entirety of the 5th age. They include almost half a million XP in different skills, the ability to make Bane arrows and Bane bolts that are strong versus dragons, a new Barrows brother in the Barrows minigame, and some other things. This video marks an end to the 5th age quest grind. Next video I'm going to take on the world wakes, 
a quest that officially marks RuneScape's transition to the sixth age. After that, I'll probably take a slight break from questing to do some slaying and bossing before continuing to the sixth age quest grind. Apologies for the gap between this video and the previous one. Almost all of the clips were recorded back in August, but I had some real life commitments and couldn't find the time to either play RuneScape or edit the videos for a while. I'm back now though, and episode 5 should be just around the corner. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like or subscribe.